we painted an army of the most savage space marines. This army's been painted by Will, one of the artists here at Siege, and comprises of some Vanguard veterans, intercessors, heavy intercessors, two Devastator squads, three Invader ATVs, two Drop Pods, two Assault Terminator squads, and then a whole host of regular tactical Terminators. And finally, Tiberus, the Red Wake, the most brutal of Space Marines to lead the army. So let's jump in and have a look at this awesome army. We're going to start by looking at the drop pods right at the back of the army. Uh, drop pods, probably one of the most iconic Space Marine transport vehicles. Uh, Will's done a great job of highlighting all the different armor panels across this miniature because there's a lot of edges on it. Uh, the pod does completely open so that you can see it in its full uh, sort of spread with all the doors open, which is great. Uh, one thing I do really like on the inside is that uh, also the, t the sort of relay or kind of like targeting array for deployment has also been painted. This big screen in the center here with this lovely orange kind of glow. You can see some little blips and markers on there and some crosshairs and things, which just really add that extra little detail. I love the use of the orange to just work with the gray, really high contrast as well, which just looks great. Something really nice that's been done on this kind of like golden kind of ancient gold kind of inlay here on this central part. I do think that's quite a nice little touch. Uh, but Will's done a great job of painting all the little details and all aspects of the metal work on this awesome drop pod. So next, let's have a look at the ATV. So there are three of them in this force. We've got two armed multi-melters and one with an onslaught cannon. So let's have a look at the one with the cannon first of all. Really awesome fast hitting unit for the Primaris Force with its dual sort of pilot, uh, or say one gunner, one pilot. Uh, always done a great job of picking out all the little screens and things on this so you can see all the individual screens are painted as well. Um, I do really like the use of that blue on the, uh, the front headlights as well, very spec ops kind of like blue lights. Uh, which is quite cool. Uh, you can see the yellow lenses on all the face plates of the Marines as well, that really nice vibrant yellow lens uh, color that's been done there. Uh, the super sharp highlighting that's been done on every single aspect of the uh, armor paneling on this as well. But it's nice that the metals are quite, uh, quite darker as well. I think that fits with the theme of the army quite nicely. Uh, but as I said, we've done a great job of painting all the little intricate little details on this ATV. So let's have a look at another one. We'll look at the one with multi-melter, uh, just a comparable weapon. So we had to look at the one that had the cannon first of all. Let's now have a look at the one that's got obviously the multi-melter. Again, the same consistent of painting across all the aspects of detail on the miniature, all the screens and lights and everything done in that blue. Uh, you can see the lenses on the Marines again done in that yellow as well. I do like the use of that sort of desaturated coppery tone just on that melter barrel. Uh, just works really nicely. Uh, and you've got a bit more of a rich kind of like gold tone for all the Aquilas and uh, on, the, on the sort of chest of the Marines, plus also on the front of the ATV there. There. So that's one of the other ATVs from the force. We're now going to jump into the main bulk, which is all the infantry, and there's lots of different types of infantry, but we're going to start with the heavy intercessors and work our way through. We've done a really great job of adding that Karkaridans colour scheme across the bulky armour of this Gravis clad marine. Uh, I love the white face plates on this with the yellow lenses. I think it works really nicely uh, and just adds a bit of a focal point to the miniature, which I think is great. You can see obviously it's got some purity seals just there on the front with all the text and scripture just done on those parchment areas. Um, the really consistent edge highlighting that's been done across all aspects of the miniature. Uh, if we look around the back here, you can see all the armor plates and everything fully highlighted through multiple stages of highlighting, which is done, just done really nicely. Uh, that's one of these awesome heavy intercessors from the army. So let's have a look at another one of the heavy intercessors. It pulled forward one of the sergeant models here, just with a bare head, which I think is quite cool. Um, you can see he's just got the rebreather on, and that rebreather is also done in a white as well, same as the face plate, so that half mask kind of thing that he's got, which is quite cool. Uh, again, really, really nice looking model with sharp edging across every aspect of detail. Again, I really love the darker metallics that have been used on this. Just adds a bit more of a kind of like a stealthy kind of look to them, uh, which I really do like ever so much. So it's really nice to see some non-Primaris miniatures in this force, and we have got two Devastator squads, so we're gonna pull forward some of these. Let's have a look at one of the grab cannons to start off with. And you can see Will's done a great job of picking out all the targeting sort of lenses or optics on this model done in that orange as well. Uh, just really adds a vibrant warm color to the palette, which I think works nicely with the rest of the cooler, sort of more desaturated tones and colors that are on there. Uh, but again, really, really nice. We got, I haven't spoken about the basing, but obviously the basing has got a bit of an urban kind of uh, environment with some splashes of greener color with the uh, vibrant green tufts that are done on some of the areas of the miniatures, which is also quite nice. Again, all the gold work that you can see on the barrel, plus also just on the Aquila, really rich, warm golds just to add a bit of contrast and just spot color to those areas of detail on the miniature. But that's one of these awesome grav cannon wielding firstborn devastators. So we'll have a look at the other squad of Devastators as well. I'm going to pull forward the Sergeant from this one. Uh, it's something quite interesting on him, which is quite nice. 
Our client requested giving the any bear heads in this army a real savage kind of look by making their eyes completely black, uh, which is something that Will's done a great job on this. And it's really nice to see that kind of savagery kind of like uh, resembled on their faces, which is really cool. Again, you've got a lightning claw here on him, on the sergeant, plus uh, a little friend with that servo skull that's just obviously following him around. And you've got the orange targeter there just on that signum on the uh, sergeant's backpack, which is quite cool. Um, if you look around here, you've got obviously a purity seal with some text written on it as well, which looks quite nice. And on his shoulder, you've also got another purity seal there just with all the text and everything sort of fully painted on there. Uh, but that's a sergeant from the second Devastator squad. So I'll have a look at one of the multi melters from the unit as well. Uh, we've actually got a Mark VI Corvus pattern beaky helmet in this force, which is actually really cool. And you can see all the optics and things done on that helmet, also done in a really nice vibrant orange, just to keep it consistent across the army, which is just great. Uh, wielding a multi melter, so really nice to see a uh, first born Devastator with a multi melter there. So we've got all the pipes done on the multi melter here, and it's really cold, cool blue, which just contrasts really nicely to the orange kind of accents in the optics and targeters that are on the model. Uh, and again, you've got that brass kind of color there just on the barrels of the multi melter. Doesn't look like it's been fired yet, it's not got any scorch marks on it, but um, really, really nicely executed by Will. Uh, really clean and really sharp. So not only have we got some devastated firstborn marines in this army, we also have some vanguard veterans. Uh, a flavor of the army that I absolutely love, obviously some assault troops. We're just going to pull forward a few of these for you to have a look at them. Really nice to see some firstborn return to the channel uh, in this Karkaradan's army. And again, here you've got a vanguard veteran with a fully white helmet just to show that kind of veteran status of him, which is quite cool. Um, again, armed with a lightning claw and also a storm shield. Uh, but you can see all the little intricate details of sort of filigree and ornate aspects on the armor, shoulder pads or pauldrons and sort of on the outside of the power fist, all painted in a rich, warm gold, which just looks really nice, kind of antique looking, which uh, a veteran should have. If we move the model around, you'll see on the shield, there's obviously some text and stuff that's been free handed onto the shield, which is quite nice. Uh, so if we just look around there, you can see all the details across the pad and also on the shield. And then moving around the back, you've obviously got the jump pack there with all the details fully painted as well. Uh, but again, Will's done a really, really incredible job painting all the sharp, refined details that are on this miniature. So following on from the Vanguard veterans, uh, we have another unit wielding storm shields and we have some assault terminators with thunder hammers. Now these are really awesome. Our client wanted the larger Terminators that have come from the Leviathan box, but unfortunately at the moment there's no assault variants available. So what we've done for our client is use the old Terminator arms on the new scale Terminator bodies, and they work really, really well. There's a really great use of those same parts, again the shoulder pads plus also the actual arms, and the scale fits really nicely as you can see here on the miniature. Um, again, I do like this pose, it's almost goading an enemy by pointing the hammer at them, uh, which is quite awesome. Uh, but again, you can see the much larger size Terminator. And again, Will has done a really exemplary job of sharp highlighting on all the aspects of detail on the miniature. Um, I like the use of the kind of like crimson on the sort of like the grip part of the hammer. Uh, it just adds a splash of warm tone to the miniature along with the green on the bases. And again, those colors contrasting really nicely. Uh, and you can see obviously just some free handed text there on the shield, the word void written on that shield, which is quite cool. Uh, obviously, they uh, they scour the void of the enemies of the Emperor, which is awesome. Uh, and again, you can see the use of that white helmet there for the veteran status of this miniature. Uh, but working really, really well together, those parts from the old Terminator kit and the new Terminator kit to make an awesome assault Terminator. So following on from the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield wielding Terminators, we also have some more Assault Terminators wielding Lightning Claws. So let's just pull one of those forward for you to have a look at. Much the same as the other Assault Terminators, we've used the old Terminator Lightning Claws on this new size body. And I absolutely love the pose of this one. Just looks very menacing, like he's looming down on an enemy, which is just great. Uh, ready to tear them limb from limb. Uh, again, the arms fit really nicely on the model and do scale up very well against the new Leviathan Terminator bodies, which is just great. Uh, again, just to show consistency purposes, Will's done a really great job on every aspect of detail. You've got the white veteran Terminator helmet there with those lovely yellow lenses on the, on the head, which is great. Uh, if we move around, you'll see obviously really refined, sharp highlighting across every aspect of the armor paneling. And again, just a nice uh, sort of parity to the rest of the blue accents in the force. You can see just on some of those full energy cables on the lightning claws the blue has also been applied there just to keep that consistent across the army uh, but again a really really lovely miniature uh, with that splash of green on the base just to add a bit of warmth to what is an overall colder palette 
So following on from the last squad of Assault Terminators, we have 19 normal Terminators, or as they were originally known, Tactical Terminators with the Storm, Bolter and Power Fist loadout. Uh, and as I said, there's 19 of them, so there's quite a few. Our, our client definitely likes Power Fists because uh, there's a lot of them in this army. So we're just going to pull forward some of these Terminators for you to have a look at. These are the Leviathan Terminators, as you am sure you can tell straight away. Really exquisite sculpts, super crisp with obviously the brand new cast things that they've got. Um, just really well executed here by Will on every detail. You can see the lovely sharp highlighting across every aspect of the detail on the miniature. That includes obviously the black power fist, which I think is really great to have that power fist in black, just a little bit different um, and obviously just uh, denote the armor by uh, sectioning it out with some color. Obviously you've got the other pauldron there in black as well and also the gun casing of the storm bolter done in the black. Uh, makes them look very menacing, obviously with that dark desaturated grey and that black uh, and really just draws the eye to those vibrant white uh, veteran heads which are just awesome. Uh, so that's another one of the, uh, of the Terminators. So leading the 19 Terminators we have a Sergeant uh, which I did want to show because it's uh, an awesome pose again from that Leviathan kit. Uh, bare-headed there, as you can see, with that white rebreather, uh, which is very common on any bare-faced miniatures in this army. Uh, has swapped out the power sword uh, for a power fist, uh, which is just great. Uh, firing away there with a storm bolt up, ready to bring someone's end with a power fist as well, which is just great. You can see the purity seals and things done on all the miniatures have got all the text on them. So all the scriptures have been sort of free-handed on there as well, which Will's done a great job at. Uh, but this is just this awesome, awesome Terminator Sergeant to lead those 19 Terminators into battle. Following on from that Terminator Sergeant leading all of those Terminators, we have some intercessors. It's really nice to see a mix of Firstborn and Primaris uh, within this force and then have that scattering of the iconic Terminator armor in the army. So let's jump into these intercessors and have a look at them. We're going to pull forward the sergeant first of all so you can have a look at him. Again, really awesome model there with that white kind of face plate on the helm which I think is just great. Really sections the armor quite nicely uh, and allows you to sort of draw the eye onto that area of detail. You can see all the warm rich gold across the miniature uh, which is really nice. Uh, it gives it a very kind of like antique kind of feel. I know that Karkaridans are known for kind of, kind of coming out of the, uh, the depths of space and attacking an enemy. Kind of just makes it quite nice to have that warm rich tone on there. You can see the purity seals that are on the uh, chest there with all that text and everything that Will has done a great job of painting onto the miniature. We've got a really nice kind of like uh, bolter held aloft pose pointing at a target and you've got that really rich warm brown strap on the bolter just again a nice use of that sort of uh, warmer colour on there just to add a splash of temperature balance on the miniatures which I think works really nicely. And again, you can see the same thing there with all the pouches and straps around the back of the miniature. I do like that splash of white just on that decorative kind of rope that's just on the shoulder guard there. Again, just keeps a real high contrast on that black pad uh, and just uh, adds a little bit of interest to that specific detail. But that's the sergeant leading the intercessor squad. Let's have a look at one of the regular intercessors. Again, the backbone of the Primaris army. Again, just really, really nicely executed. Again, Will's done a great job on this. Uh, not so much vibrant rich gold on him as he's obviously not a sergeant. You've got the Aquila and you've got that nice banding there just on the shoulder guard uh, and the little Aquila on the bolter. And if we move the model around, you'll see again, Will's done a really, really nice job of uh, edge highlighting this really refined across every aspect of detail on the armor, on all of the uh, little details, like for example, the Aquila, the face plate, all the lenses, everything we've got multiple stages of highlighting on them which is just really nicely done and again i do really like the use of that warm rich green just for the tufts on the base it adds a little bit of warmth on that base as well uh, which is just absolutely lovely and finally to lead this force we have the man the myth the legend uh, the monster we have tiberus the red wake now this model was painted by george one of the artists here at siege uh, as a character commission separate to the army uh, but to go with the army that will has painted um, really, really well executed by George. Again, you can see the super crisp highlighting on this Forge World model, which is just awesome. Um, you can see all the sort of gold work detail in there. You've got the deflection studs on the shin plate, plus also the shoulder guard and over the chest. Uh, Tybris is known for being uh, extremely savage. And I like what George has done here by placing him on a much larger base just to increase the size and stature of the miniature compared to all the other Terminators that are in the force. You can see those super aggressive chain fist bladed power fists, if that's uh, that's the craziest weapon in 40k, um, just in a very aggressive attacking kind of pose that Tybris has got. Um, I do love the use of the yellow just on the chest in the iconic livery that Tybris carries. 
Uh, and you can see that skull hanging from his, or the skull was hanging from his waist there, just with a really nice, soft, rich undertone just in some of the recesses. Uh, but overall, really exquisitely painted. Uh, again, super sharp highlighting across every aspect of detail on the miniature. Uh, but that is Tiberus the Red Wake, one of the most uh, aggressive, horrendous monster chapter masters from Warhammer 40,000. So there we have it, this awesome Karkaridans Space Marine Army. Really nice to see that Primaris and First Pool mix in the force. Will and George have both done an extremely great job on all the aspects of work they've undertaken on this project. I do hope you've liked it ever so much. If you'd like an army or commission with us here at Siege, then do not hesitate and go to the description of this video where you can find a link to the Siege Studios website and our contact form. Fill that in to get a quote from us today for your project. A huge thank you from myself and all the team here at Siege for watching this video. I hope you like this super aggressive army. I'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.